Hey everyone, welcome to the Roto Grinders Morning Grind podcast. I'm your host, Stevie TPFL. We're here to talk a special edition Morning Grind, little extra podcast this week, six podcasts this week, and joined today by my good buddy Dan Gaspar. You all know him in the DFS streets as Mr. Tuttle. Dan, what's happening, my friend? Not much. Um, we were talking pre-show. I, I mentioned I don't. I don't think I've done a morning grind with you, and you've been doing this what ten years? Eight years in two weeks. So April. I, I think we fig- we figured it out on the podcast yesterday. Was April fourth is eight years. Um, 2016. Yeah. Me and Beer did the first podcast. Yeah. So it's been eight years. I haven't been on here. I mean, I haven't worked with RG all those years, but uh, haven't been on here yet. So kind of funny to do it on. A special edition that's college basketball yeah gonna talk um college basketball we got brackets being built we got all kinds of betting going on this is uh for for all those states like north carolina right north carolina just introduced um sports betting they're getting their first like taste of march madness and you're gonna learn really quick how fun it is and one of my favorite things when we were in nashville for the rg party last year was live betting college basketball. I don't follow a lot of college basketball, but live betting college basketball was like the my favorite part of the Super Bowl weekend. Like Super Bowl was great. It was awesome. But live betting college basketball was just phenomenal. Was it just like I'm just gonna were you actually looking for angles while you were doing it or was it just kind of like enjoyment factor? Okay, so it was me, Noto, Chief, um, Eric Bimefor, and honestly any favorite that would get down like early in the game, we would just pound the the line. Um, and that doesn't always work, right? Like we know that, but it was working that day, that weekend. Uh, it was, it was so fantastic in that aspect. So um, yes, I guess technically we were looking for an angle. Um, it, it, I made, made a good amount of money, so I wasn't complaining. It was, it yeah. worked. Um, and I've, I've live bet some college basketball, like over the last few weeks when all the like tournament games and stuff going on here and it's been working. So I wouldn't necessarily say I was doing it more of like betting favorites when they be getting down. I just kind of look at scores and odds and teams that people are on. If they get down, I just find it and bet that one. Cause in Florida oh, with the hard rock, like you're, you're limited to one book. So some of the lines are awful. So I'll like write it down and I'll be like, all right, well, 10 minutes of the game they're the line is now where we can bet it in my opinion. So um, that's what I've been doing. Nice. So man, so much going on for the tournament. We have a ton of stuff just in general on rotor grinders and scores and odds. Let's just go through on RG first here. I know you're part of the projections team for a lot of sports. Um, You know, you got those projection mind working over there. Tuttle. What are we doing with college basketball here with the tournament? Yep. So projections wise, we have full projections. Um, we've been up and running now three or four weeks. We wanted to make sure we got some good test runs in uh, before the the tournament, which is all we were planning on offering this season. Uh, so we got those up and running. I've been playing with them um, and having some success. So we'll have projections. Th- uh, well, now we, we had them today as well for the there's two two NCAA games tonight while we're recording this and then the NIT slates. So we'll, we'll continue to do through NIT and NCAA throughout the uh, the playoffs there. And those are those are live on lineup HQ. So you guys can load up lineup HQ. Tuttle's doing you're doing core plays, um, right? Correct. Yes. On. Yep. So you, you got core plays and I, I saw there was another person, right? Barnkiss, I think. Oh, and then, the the yeah, goat, I'm, man. Yeah, the guy, that guy's been doing college basketball content for RG for a long time. Yep. Yeah, and it looked like I. I mean, I don't know a hundred percent content wise, but I, like I saw the account tweet out um, a betting preview on Roto Grinders as well. Um, that I was reading. Yeah, I saw that. Well. Yeah, with uh, yeah. So uh, wasn't it? It was like Luch. Uh, it was a few of the scores and odds guys. So that was really cool to see. We gave out, or they gave out. I, I say we, <laughs> not me. Um, they gave out some picks that you can jump on and take advantage of. It was Eric, um, Jordan Case, who just came over to RG and scores and odds and started doing some content. So, yep. um, yeah. So take advantage of that. That's up on the website right now. Like if you go to the Rotor Grinders, um homepage it's like 
fourth or fifth down. So take advantage of that. And um, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I bet some of that stuff already. So um, that's what's that's what's fun about it. And then on scores and odds, I'll talk more on this um, title. But scores and odds, uh, the team is just pumping out content nonstop. Uh, they were up 12 units last year for the NCAA tournament. We have a lot more people doing um, college basketball content for scores and odds this year. So I'm hoping and I already like we are in the 15 to 20. I think there's like 25 plus picks already on scores and odds just for this week. So I assume with the player props and lines and all that fun stuff, we're going to have a ton of content on scores and odds. And for people that are not in the States with, you know, legalized betting, you could take advantage of these player props over there on, or, you know, more or less on these predictions for prize picks and underdog because they were offering them the last time. But hey, I'm in Florida. I can't even click on prize picks now. They don't show me the boards anymore. So, uh, but you can take advantage of these um, projections and and stuff like that as well. And you could use the RG projections and, you yep. know, try to see what you could take advantage of. And I, I know the prop model is going to get rolling here as well. So, uh, again, ton of value to whether you want to play DFS or you want to play or do some betting here. So um, just love this time of year. It's always fun. I'm repping my Gator hat. I don't think we're going to go far in the tournament this year, but um, uh, should be fun stuff. Uh, anything else that you wanted to add as far as like content for scores and odds or RG? Just the scores and odds. I did actually throw four picks up for the prop model already today. So like you said, I'm, I'm in Wisconsin, so I have to do – I'm the opposite of you. I got to do player props because I can't uh, – I have to drive down to Illinois if I want to go uh, play some bets. Um, so I, I focus on the, the prop side, the player prop side. And we have four up there already um, for some Thursday, Friday games, and I would guess we'll double, triple that in our offerings So over the next couple of days. Yeah, so I, I can't take advantage of player props. So we don't have player props <laughs> available. So it's like opposite. Like I, I can just bet yeah. the games and, you know, you got to love it. Like, yeah, always fun. But I mean, I'm not complaining. I, I've enjoyed it and, you know, definitely going to enjoy this time of the year. But let's, uh, let's talk round one. You know, like you said, there's a couple games going here with the, I guess we call them like playing games or bubble games, whatever we want to yeah. call them. Um, but we have, uh, we have a pretty interesting round one, you know, my local, like small college, um, is in the, they made it in the round of 64 this year. Stetson university is yep. local to me. Um, I feel terrible for them because they get Yukon. Um, but a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement, like locally about Stetson, make it into the double NCAA, um, bracket here, but it, it's really cool. From the aspect of like, hey, your local college is going to get crushed by UConn by 30. But, yep. um, you know, let's just talk round one here in general. <sighs> Any potential upsets that are like circling for you that are interesting? Uh, I mean, we're looking at like one versus 16s. And I feel like all of the ones versus 16s, it's not even going to be like remotely contests. But what are your yeah. thoughts here on round one just in general? Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to. Pick Stetson over UConn around oh, uh, man, you know. Unfortunately, <laughs> I do. I am familiar with Stetson though for a couple different reasons. Um, first one being that they have an Isaac Jones that doesn't play, and okay, there's another popular Isaac Jones that does play and gets stats. In the NCAA. <laughs> so name matching issues, which are a nightmare. Um, oh no, that deals with projections and does DraftKings things. So I, Stetson is on my radar for that reason. Um, but yeah, we're not going there for the round one. The upset, I think that's probably going to catch steam now. Um, just before coming on the show, Kansas did announce that Kevin McCullers sitting out. He's not going to play the tournament. Um, that's Kansas's best uh, guard. Hunter Dinkinson is expected to play, which we know, but he uh, he's coming off a dislocated shoulder. Um, so Kansas is kind of beat up. They set both those guys out in their conference tourney, and just it was it was not fun to see um they were not a good team um so samford is is i think gonna end up being a kind of popular one i don't think it's like the super popular one but i think they'll they'll catch some steam here based on the kansas news for sure 
Yeah, that one's definitely interesting. Injury is definitely something you got to be paying attention to, um, and especially this time of year. And like I will say, like Discord, I know you're very active in Discord as well. Uh, the Discord college basketball channel is free. Rotogrinders.com slash Discord. It's free. Chop was in there, and you were in there. Yep. And I know a lot of people have been in there, so make sure you're paying attention to Discord. Like, take advantage of it. It's free. So yeah, um, that's where we'll you know, announce if like we keep an eye on lineups that they come out. Um, you know, it's, it's a important tournament, so teams do what they can to to not sit guys. So that's usually right. not too much of a, an issue. Uh, but that is where, if like tonight, there was I think a, a team in the NIT that had a guy surprisingly sit out. Um, that's where we'll kind of update that sort of news. Yeah, and like there is a like bot that like will say, "Hey, projections have been updated," so you could take advantage yeah. of that too. We're we're like this close to doing that for nascar can't wait to have that on there as well but uh one of the popular ones that i've seen here is this oh where was it i'm sorry drake versus washington state it's a 10 versus 7 game like a lot of love for drake uh, against washington state i know it's not a huge upset but i've seen multiple people talk about that one in general so i thought that one was somewhat interesting and now the line has moved to like Drake being favorited in that game. Okay. So um, I thought that was, that was really great. And I, I mean, that was the one that was jumping off. And then there, that um, South Carolina, Oregon game. I know that that game is supposed to be like a really low scoring, like defensive game. Those games scream upset to me, like yeah. in college basketball in March. So that's one that like both of those games I have circled. Like I took the under in that Oregon game. I think it was Eric who had mentioned it in that article we were just talking about on RG. Um, so I took the under in that game, but I also took Oregon. Um, I think I got him at plus two or plus two and a half or something because like it just screams upset, like slow paced defensive games in March. Like all you got to do is get a little bit of a run. Um, and there was another one that was really popular that had kind of shifted um, New Mexico over Clemson. And yeah, now, they're, like, they're New Mexico, favorite. yeah, they're favored now. So um, really interesting when you're looking at that. Do you – I know, like, a lot of um, a lot of the projection stuff, you guys are, you know, talking with a team and stuff. Are you guys looking at how these lines are moving when you're looking at doing the college basketball projections? Yeah, I mean, part of the base is that, you know, we're pulling in – totals we're pulling in spreads and that's kind of the basis for how many points we're trying to project out for a team uh, so we definitely keep up with that movement um and i think it was the interesting you were talking about pace of play with that oregon game um i don't know if you've heard of, I, and i don't know whether the originator here so i don't know like who to credit but there's something going around it's called the trapezoid of success i don't know if oh, you no. saw this no college basketball and so it's a chart right so there's uh it goes net rating and pace and so basically you obviously want a team that has a good net rating right like that's obvious but now the trapezoid fills in the the upper part where it's saying you don't want an outlier pace so you want a team that has a really good net rating obviously but you don't really want an outlier pace because those outlier paces um introduce upsets basically uh they introduce variance i guess would be the, the nerdy way of saying it so you don't want um in terms of the the high end in terms of who falls outside of the trapezoid of success because they play too fast would be like arizona who i think will be a, a fairly popular pick um and they kind of struggle a little bit florida actually your florida uh gators they play fast, right on the edge there yeah yeah they play fast so those are the fun teams right but then on the like the the boring side they're saint mary's uh, who falls outside of it. Um, the, the notable one is Houston is still in the trapezoid of success. So they, they don't, they, they play very, very slow um, and methodical, but not like to the point where it could be a detriment. Yeah. I mean, watching my Gators um, really fun to watch them play basketball yeah. this year uh, because we are terrible in the half court, but man, when we get out running, um, we're actually decent. And like, that's kind of what happened in the SEC game. Um, we got it back down to like one point by, you know, trying to play in transition. And, oh, gosh, that game slowed down a little bit, and we were awful. Um, it wasn't fun to watch. Uh, just like uh, outside looking in here really quick, and then uh, we'll let you get out of here. And we'll, we are, for what it's worth, anybody that's watching live on YouTube, we are doing NBA still at 1030. Keith and I will be talking 
NBA Wednesday slate. So uh, we'll get into all the NBA stuff here, but we wanted to do at least a little college basketball. I mean, college basketball is March, right? So um, UConn, I wanted to talk about them really quick. They're yeah. they're still the favorite to win. Um, they got a tough road. Like they yes. potentially, like if FAU can win their first game, like UConn's going to have to play FAU. FAU is a really scary team. Um, when they're clicking, they're a really scary team. And they're potentially like needing to go through like Auburn. Um, they have a really tough like draw here to get to even the Elite Eight. Um, what are your thoughts just on UConn? Yeah, I think they're supposed to be the number one overall seed, right? So like yeah. this is something that the committee is supposedly taking into consideration <laughs> is like not giving them the hardest strength. But the the their East region has, you mentioned UConn, um, and then the two teams that I was like, I want to see where these guys go because I could see them getting into the final four wherever they end up. And that's uh, Auburn and then Iowa State as well. Iowa State looked good. Um, so, they, I mean, they have a really tough road. In my personal bracket, I still am having them come out. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely brutal. Um, and it makes it hard to pick upsets in general in that region as well. Like, because, I, I, I mean, one, two, three is just absolutely stacked. Or one through four, I guess Auburn's Auburn's a four seed. So yeah, one one through four is pretty stacked. Illinois is the three seed there. Yeah, it's a tough um tough. What is it? The East bracket, East side bracket. Um, yeah, East region that, and BYU like is one of those teams that you could consider taking. Like if like maybe maybe they'll beat Illinois, but then again, then the, then they have to face Iowa State, and then it gets really tough on them. Oh yeah, I mean tough just in general. You look at the south and it's like hey houston probably has one of the better draws um as far as getting to the elite eight i think um unfortunately for my gators uh, marquette is a really good team this year and that is you want to talk about a game that you're going to potentially look at like betting overs if florida wins and marquette wins like those are two fast-paced teams um i noticed that when i was watching some marquette basketball another live bet that happened during um, their tournament game. So there you go. Um, so like that, I mean, obviously Duke's there, Kentucky's there. Like those are like household names, but I think Houston has a pretty good road. Um, Purdue has a pretty good road. They're eventually going to show up in one of these tournaments and, you know, play really good basketball. They have Tennessee and I think Tennessee is a really stout team SEC wise. Um, and then, you know, North Carolina, they get a pretty easy go here. Um, I know a lot of people on that Mississippi State Michigan game. Um, that was in the article as well. But before we let you get out of here, I, I gotta know. I know you just said that in your personal bracket you got UConn. If yeah, you're not taking boring. UConn, yeah, who who do, who do you got, Mister Boring? I mean, Mister Tuttle. I, I think the. I mean, this, this is not the team I'm picking, but it's the team I have opposite UConn, who I don't think will be very popular. It's Tennessee. Who you kind of touched on? Obviously, they're you know they're two seeds, so they're not like going under the radar by any stretch. But uh, I think people will pick Purdue and Houston out of that uh, side of the bracket pretty often. So I, I like going Tennessee there. Oh, I like that. Um, I, I think Tennessee is underrated, and as a Gator, it really pains me to say that. Um, for what it's worth, I yeah, I, I don't I don't want to root for Tennessee, but when I was messing around um, before the show and looking at it, I, I feel like they do have a pretty good road. I, I like that call because I, I do think Purdue is going to be pretty popular. I think Houston is going to be pretty popular. Right. I, I, I still debating on who I want like as my champion, but right now, like my lean <laughs> out of everybody here is Kentucky. I feel like Kentucky is that sneaky team this year that just kind of going a little overlooked. Um, I, I think they have a chance to beat Houston if they can get past Marquette, um, depending on like how the bracket, maybe my Gators beat Marquette and like, I'm happy. And then we lose, um, you know, to Kentucky, which at, as a Gator would uh, pain me a little bit too. But yeah, I I'm looking at Kentucky to be like that. And we, I don't even know if we call them Cinderella team because like there are three seeds. So, I don't know if we're going to necessarily see a, a Cinderella team. We'll see one make a run somewhere. Um, I think a lot of people are calling for that one team to be New Mexico. New Mexico, um, yeah. Yeah, that's, so that's so a lot of New Mexico love um, here. So you want to be contrarian in your... And then McNeese Samford would be like the other... Yeah, I think if you want to be contrarian in your bracket, pick Clemson over New Mexico in the first game. I think a lot of people are going to have um, New Mexico, like even potentially getting to like the Sweet 16. So a uh, lot of New Mexico love just yeah. on 
social media. So, uh, Tuttle, any final thoughts on March Madness RG offerings? Anything like that? No, uh, just come visit us. Um, like Stevie mentioned, we do have the Discord channel. It's free. Uh, if you have questions, we welcome any anything there. And again, if you are a subscriber, that is where you'll see projections of when projection updates come. And I try to post any relevant news items in there as well. Yeah, I mean, Discord in general is free. I think there's like three or four paid channels. The NASCAR channel, that NASCAR guy, we got to get on that guy. But um, that, that's one of our paid channels. But yeah, college basketball, take advantage of that. The Squad Ride channel, um, we just hit the Squad Ride for tonight. You're, yours truly, um, Fred Van Vliet Assist, we got that. Um, I got nervous there for a little while because the game got out of hand, but we got the Squad Ride, so... Take advantage of these free channels, rotogrinders.com slash discord. And um, yeah, Tuttle and I know Chop will be in there. Chop loves this time of year and take advantage of that free channel. But that's going to wrap it up here for a little college basketball talk. Maybe we'll talk again ne- next week. Not Dan, because we don't want to bug him. But um, whoever I'm doing basketball with on a slow slate, we'll talk maybe round two and three and stuff. So hope you have a good one, Dan. Thanks for joining me. Everyone else back talking NBA here in a little while. Thanks for hanging out.